right. this week we're doing our reactions to Donald Trump's behavior. Right. It's just... You know what's odd about that? How are, well, I don't know if the word odd is. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't understand why people follow him. I don't. You know, I don't I get it. I was, like, trying to understand just the logic of people's brains. I mean, and I understand, okay, they hated Obama and they yeah. hate Hillary, and that's uh, and that's fine. You know, okay. hate, hate's a motivator. Yeah. But here's the thing I, that I'm a problem and says when people say, well, his economic policy agrees. When I said, okay, let's for, say for the sake of honesty, and, and that your your economic uh, his economic ideals line up with yours. Yeah. Why do you believe that he's going to do it? I, that's the thing. I'm, that's the that's the biggest problem. Is like, okay, they say, well, he wants to do this and he wants to do that. Okay, fine, that's yeah. great. But take take. Let's say it's not Donald Trump. Let's say it's any other politician in history who says anything to get elected. Right. Why do you believe he's going to do those things? Exactly. That's the thing that I just find so mind boggling. So and it and here's one of the things that um. um I, it, it, uh, came, it came to me um, yeah. that I was thinking about that people need to get comfortable, not get comfortable, but watch out for. Yeah. When I was young, because like I'm 52, like I'm not. You're 52. I told you I'm probably. Oh my God, I I'm, you were I, like 30. Something. I'll take that. I'll be 30 today. Today we're 30. I'll be 30. I'm 30 something, y'all. I ain't 52 today. 30 something. But when I was younger, yeah. police used to stop brothers and, and give them a beat. Give me the but and here and the thing is, me and a bunch of guys my age were look, we're talking about that, yeah. and we were talking about those were the good old days. In the good old days, you could be going to a barbecue, get stopped by the police, have some words, yeah. maybe you mouthed off, cop would say get out, yeah. and you talk, and and you would throw. Yeah. Okay. Now you know if you had any sense, if you could if you could whoop a cop, you wasn't gonna whoop. You gonna take an ass whooping. But the thing is, you take that ass whooping, you get up, get in your cup with say, now get the hell out of here, get in your yeah. car, go home, go to the barbecue and say, man, where you been? Oh, man, I got stopped by the police. Well, what happened? Ah, oh, knocked out a tooth. Oh, cool, want a beer? And that was it. I know a bunch of guys with stories like that. But those were the good old days. And it's like, that was because we looked like now, and that was when they were whooping on people that looked like me. My size, my age, whatever. Yeah. Now they're shooting at kids. People are shooting at kids. And here's the thing I was looking at. Here's the thing a, a, a guy brought up that uh, uh, a point of interest. Okay, look. For one, cops have always had um, uh, a tenuous relationship with African urban yeah. African American youth. So this is not news. Right. But uh, it wasn't always see cops end up dead. And he said, when did that like and that's what he taught. He started chronicling when he thought this happened. He says, look here. Before, he said, when, when Obama was elected president, people who, you know, lizard brain thinking, hatred, they start thinking the rapture was coming, the end of days. So they start stockpiling on canned goods and rifles and ammunition. And what, you're, what he was saying was he's seeing a very, the light's green, sweetheart. The light's green. Green light. Yeah. That's how that works here. <laughs> and so, and he said, so, you know, he sees all, you know, the Andrews comment, he sees all that hatred. He said, when that happened, we went from brothers getting whooped in the street to get kids getting shot in the street. And he was saying, this is a very extreme reaction to have an African-American president. He said, that's not the only issue. But he says, but you're looking at a very extreme reaction, okay, to um, a general malaise of an unhappiness with where the country's going. And we, and we said, well, because, you know, because he says, look at it, man, think about it. He says, okay, cool. He says, now, that may not be exactly, that may not, definitely it's not the only reason. But he said, it's a contributing factor. And he said, here's the thing that people need to look out for. That hatred doesn't just go away. It'll convert. It'll go from racial hatred and bigotry to misogyny. So... When Hillary becomes president, and I'm reasonably certain that she will, women need to watch out because all those guys who have that latent misogyny yeah. creeping around She's in there, gonna it's going to explode. Having a female boss, they think the work, the country, because the country, as far as they're concerned, yeah. when the bad direction, we hired that black guy. Yeah. Now you're going to hire a woman. It's over. And no, it is. I already feel it. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking, you know, they're raping girls at college camp campuses like it's a sport. Like it's free, yeah, you know, and so, and I'm thinking to myself, 
you know, when she becomes president, there's going to be an uptick in that kind of violence towards women. And I just think that people need to watch out. I mean, I think that, well, I know the women, I said, you know, look, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that, you know, we look back on this and say, but that time that guy said, man, he was completely off base. That's what I'm hoping for. But I don't think that's the case. say when you think of florida don't think miami think kentucky mountains think tennessee because there's more of that than there is of that stuff you're seeing in miami right. and i said oh he says yeah because nobody puts this on tv when you think of florida all you see is beaches and hotels and people vacation women bikinis he says but it's there's a lot of swamp stuff going on a lot of gators so you know and he says think more of that because there's more of this than there's that so i'm sorry i see what you went into but yeah i just Exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, sure, there'll, there'll be a momentary celebration of, okay, the black guy's gone, but then people who lead things to be angry at, yeah. you know, who live for confrontation, well, where does that go? Yeah. And it's, I, I think it's going to go to women. And, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, what I'm saying is, it's not that I'm not concerned with women who are already in positions where that's their life. Yeah. Nothing will change for them. If you're married to a drunken alcoholic, a womanizer, a abuser, he's yeah. going to continue to do that. I'm concerned with those people who are in situations where it's borderline. Yeah. You know, well, guys who normally wouldn't be that upset now are. You know, yeah. people who feel threatened, and I think that's the, and, and I just think because, you know, I, like I said, I mean, it, there's so much physical abuse on college campuses and workplace, you know, harassment that I just see that going up. Something I want to say um, for the, for my for my viewers that uh, the people that follow me that you know in in keeping with all the dynamic women that I usually end up interviewing, I would like to introduce you guys to Genevieve. Listen up, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Genevieve, tell them about you and what you're doing. Are you from the Bay Area, Bay Area originally? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's all right. And then you, you, when you came down here, did you start the collective before you came down here? No, I came here and my first job, I worked for Teach of America. Okay. Um, I did fundraising for the nonprofit, and um, after that, I went into uh, finance. I was a financial analyst for a commercial real estate firm, and then um, I really wanted to. I Away from each other. I picked up a girl last week, excuse me, a, a young lady 
this week. Um, who is, um, she's a public speaker. She's about 26 years old. And, okay, her name is Natalie Warren. N-A-R-N-E. And it sounds like not being part of a collective, she does exactly what you do. And you guys are really close. If you look her up right now, yeah, uh, Natalie, like Natalie's name is W A R N E. And she on Instagram? You know, I don't know. Um, she gave me her card, and I looked at, and I um, emailed her last week, but I I didn't bother to look. I'm not. I'm gonna like I'm gonna make it. <laughs> but I mean, no, not Warren. Just W A R N E. I don't know why it's spelled like that. And um, when we had a conversation, it sounds like she did. I mean, she started doing she started doing TED Talks. She She's did. a TED Talks team. And when you started about, talked about teaching, she did the same thing in Rwanda. Oh, she did. And I'm like, this sounds like somebody you want on your forum. Oh, my gosh. She looks amazing being young and making an impact. Wow. Yes. Yeah, this is exactly the type of that's part of my, that's kind of my thing. That's when I interview people or when I, when people ride in my car, whenever I meet people who are, who would, I think there would be good synergy, who should yeah. kind of line up, I make sure to try and get them to contact one another. That's so amazing. And um, uh, when you, when you reach out to her, um, yeah, let her know that Frank, you. the Uber driver, yeah. said we need to, we need to get together because I dropped her off and she went, to, she was on a speaking engagement I draw uh, she went somewhere <laughs> yes. I took her to the airport yes. to talk somewhere but I think and she was telling me about um, getting involved with TED Talks because wow, it's kind of thing yeah she's incredible isn't she yes. and uh, it's the kind of thing that I want to get into because it's talk I used to work yeah, for, I, feel like you'd be really I, I used to uh, you know I used to work for oh, I already mentioned that you know, yeah. and it, uh, but it was soul crushing the yeah. things that I watched yeah. I just couldn't I couldn't go there every day and watch what I watched, and it just—it just seemed like all we were doing was shuffling papers, yeah, exactly. you know. So I had to leave that behind. But I've always—I still try and help people, like. Um, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Wow, you just made my day. I'm well, happy. Flustered. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you two are more aligned than any two other people that I've—I've I've, uh, tried to get together. I get I get um, artists, you know, singers yeah. and so forth, and every now and again, the, the occasional AR guy, and I'll say, tell them about this person or that person. Such a cool way to meet people. Yeah, driving. yeah, exactly. I, I try, you know, because uh, I hate this job. I hate driving. I hate. I can't stand driving. I I, 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 I know that the only thing that makes this job worthwhile is the interaction with people, because uh, I mean, driving in LA is a nightmare. <laughs> I rely on podcasts. So. Do you know, I need to start one of those. Everyone, the you people that follow me say that I should start a podcast. But, you know, here's the problem with being an old man. I don't even know how to start. What, I don't even know what that really means. <laughs> I don't know how to start one, but yeah. oh my God, I love them. Let's see. If you go, I'm sure you can just upload it and, like, reach out to, I'm sure some of your passengers because they're sponsoring you or their companies, but, you know. I would have uh, there's a, yeah, I mean, because that's what I get from everyone I speak to. They say, you, need, you really need, yeah. to, you need to do this. They always, you need to do this. You need to do that. You should be doing voiceovers. You ever thought about yeah, doing do do And no. The thing is, because I don't know anything about any of that. I mean, I would love to do any of that stuff, but I don't know the first thing to start where to go. Yeah. You know? I have an idea, but what I don't have is a roadmap to how to get it done. I would just look up how to, how to start make your own I mean, that's kind of simple. It's, it's kind of obvious. That's probably yeah. what I should have done. It yeah. always starts, like, kind of janky, and then you get followers, which you will, and mm-hmm. then you'll get, like, a studio or whatever, and wow. be good. Tracy Allman. Oh, my God, she's back. She's before your time when I was... I well, she was a comedian. She was she was probably the first woman who ever... After, no, not first woman. I would go second after um, Carol Burnett who used to do st- sketch comedy shows. As a matter of fact, The Simpsons started on her for her original show. Really? Her original show, she used to have these little Simpsons skits. That's where they got their start, on her show. That's so funny. Yeah. I never allowed to watch The Simpsons. 
You weren't really? Not in Friends. Your friends, your parents wouldn't let you watch Friends? No. Okay, you're gonna have to. Okay, you're gonna have to tell me about. You're gonna have to tell me about your upbringing. What was it about Friends that was so subversive? Oh, they're like, okay, well, there's just you want to watch television. You get, like, 30 minutes a day, like, maybe. And I didn't really care for it either. Um, okay. I love Gilmore Girls, but... <laughs> of course. I, like, studied a lot. So. Okay, so then your parents were, they were academically driven. They wanted you to yeah, be successful. they didn't really, like, make us do anything. I just loved studying, so I was oh, weirdo. Really? Oh, really? Oh, you were weirdo. Well, that's okay, okay. List the degrees. Let's hear them. No, no, I only have an undergrad degree. Really? That's all right. In history? Art history. Art history. Okay. I love to write, so. You like to write? Yeah. Well, I uh, went in pre-med, but I faint when I see blood, so. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's, it's really funny how often that happens. Yeah. People have, like, you know, they don't know until they go to college and see blood go, wait a minute, I, I'm a, I don't like this. No, it's like I went to the hospital and I just lost it. Well, did you, did you have any indication that you would, that you had a problem with blood before? Yeah, I mean, I always got I noticed the naturally red hair, which I think is amazing. Um, What's your background? Um, I, well, my parents, my dad's from Brooklyn, but he is part Russian, part Austrian. I think. Mm. Yeah, but like old school Brooklyn. Yeah. And then, yeah, old school Brooklyn, I like that. <laughs> my mom is like, I think she's fourth, fourth generation San Francisco, but she's French and Irish. So. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. You guys, redheads, are less than 2% of the population. And yeah, but you know what's really interesting? Oh, I was thinking, hey, just back off. Just back. What is that? Okay, I, I thought it might be something about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, less than 2% of the population, and when you see someone who has red hair that's attractive, yeah. that's extremely rare. No, I mean, no, I don't, I don't know. People say this thing is gender, but the thing is, see, like, you're an attractive, you're an attractive woman. You'd have to travel a hundred miles to find someone to match your level of attractiveness, because there's not gonna, we're not going to find any more redheads, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So basically, yeah, it's basically it's something of, of, of a friend of mine was pointing out. He said it's a unique kind of beauty. We can find blondes all day long. There'll be sisters everywhere, Asians here and there, but yeah. you won't see another redhead for the three days. That's so funny. <laughs> I don't think about it because my whole family's redheads. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! Your mom and dad? Wow, that's rare. I know. Wow, that's cool. You have brothers and sisters? Yep, they're both friends. They're both brothers. Yeah, that's so. That's uh, that's wild. I, like. <laughs> I know. So you avoid the sun? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's, well, I try here. It's pretty tough. Well, today's for you. Yeah, this is my favorite. Is that right? Yeah, it's so cool. Oh, that's true. There is that. There is that. Now, you said your name, you said your name was... Genevieve, what? Oh, it's Genevieve Grace. It's Genevieve Bea Grace. Genevieve Bea Grace. Is that, a, is that married? Is that married? Well, you, there's three names. Oh, no, I'm not married. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. it's just my parents gave us all four names. That's really, I mean, because it's really kind of a, it's, 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 um, it's cool, you know? Yeah, it's a weird one. Especially when you say Genevieve Grace Bea. Yeah. See, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's all right. That's all right. I don't have my interview questions up, but I remember them, so I want to ask you a question. 
If you could have a chance, you could have a chance to have dinner with anyone throughout history, alive or dead, who would you choose? I would love to have dinner with Michelle Obama right now. Right on, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm just loving her reaction to everything that's going on. Okay, I like I'm that. Just... Okay, I like that. All right. If you could change anything about the way you were raised, time period, geography, I'm sure there are stories to be told. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But yeah, I think it was a little. It's like I love them too much. Uh huh. To go off and do my own thing. Right. I ain't seen that. I can dig that. Okay. Let me see if I can remember those questions. I really should put them back up. Um, I know you did like the interview in your car. Well, yeah, because I, 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 um, I had, um, I had the car detailed, and the guy tore up the list. Not to mean tear it up, but. Off the list, and I said, oh, I'll put another one. I said, I've had my computer, I'll put it on. I just never got around to it. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I love this question. I love this question. You can be a man for a day. What do you do with that day? How does that day look? I would ask because when you say the relationship that men, that women have with food, yeah. is that really gender specific, or is yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's really gender specific. What I talked to a lot of nutritionists uh -huh. about it, and it's like, well, basically, one and two women have some sort of form of disorder eating, right? And that has a short term and a long term effect on their psyche and on their ability to gain and lose weight. Um, and so, when a woman's struggling with weight gain, whether it's because she's in a very stressful job. She just, you know, things happen in life. Like sometimes a recipe for weight loss isn't just calories in versus calories out. There's right. a lot of psychological baggage that goes with that. Mm -hmm. I think it has a huge impact. It's also with birth control and other um, psychiatric drugs or anything like your cycle. You, it's not a simple equation. I think men mm -hmm. really have a hard time understanding that. At least men I've talked to. So. No, I no. I'd never, I never. I used to be a personal trainer. I'd never considered that. I know that people stress eat, and they eat when they're upset. Yeah. And then, I mean, I understand that there is a psychological component by to which why people eat. That part I get. Um, but I found guys who have. There are guys who feel that way too. Yeah. Well, I love them to talk about it. Yeah. I'd love to hear that perspective. From right. I mean, because uh, I because I I remember um, talking to this one kid who ate a lot. And I found out, like, I found that you, know, you have uh, overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. And I, at one point, I interviewed a lot of morbidly obese people and found that the morbidly obese had eaten themselves to that size because there was some childhood trauma. And that childhood trauma often was uh, molestation. <coughs> and they were trying to basically, it's interesting, safeguard themselves from harm by expanding their girth and also trying to make it so that no one would want to molest them. That's so interesting. Yeah, I mean, because it's, you know, for, you know, the first time I heard it, I'm thinking, wow, okay, that's, you know, that's a unique, that's unique, yeah. you know, that's, and then you hear it, and then, and then the, I um, interviewed some women as well, it was the same thing, you know, the molest, yeah, because, and, and, and that made sense to me, um, well, everything makes sense to me, I didn't, <laughs> I, I mean, like, I, I believe almost, you know, whatever reason you have is is your reason. It right. doesn't matter if it's rational or logical. If yeah. that's your reason, that's your reason. But I could see the, the, the thinking behind that. Yeah. You know, sure, you're so small and cute and blah, 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 and all of a sudden, and then, ah, nobody wants it. Because you don't hear about fat kids getting molested as much as you hear about these little swamp. And I'm thinking... I, and I'm 
I'm, 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 the thing I was curious about was how they figured it out. Because, and you know, here's where I can't necessarily, I try to put myself in, in someone else's head thinking, I don't know that I would have figured that out. Like if I were being molested, I don't know that I would have figured out if I got really big, people would stop. So I was, it's, it's, it's interesting the way, you know, the, the necessity for coming up with an idea, because it's not like someone told them, just eat, get real big, and people will stop molesting you. It's not like any of these kids had had a conversation with anyone, and they gave them this advice, but they all reached this conclusion. And I'm like, wow, because I wouldn't have reached that conclusion. Of course, that's the assumption I have. Having not been molested, I don't know what a conclusion right. I would have been. I might have just hung myself or something, yeah. because that's a response, too. It just, it just wow. Really, it's, it's so sad, but I think it's just kind of ingrained in you from, I don't know, the first time you're born, like, society doesn't, like, capture people. Well, they don't now, but they used to. Well, that, that is used great, to be a but, like, you huh? know, women are just constantly told, like, be small, like, take up less space, like, the smaller you can be, the better. And I just think that, yeah, I think you learn that really well. You know what, though? I wonder how much, because... From a cultural perspective? Yeah. See. Well, yeah, there's that. There's yeah, that's because, 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 you know, my people don't have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, my people are very much in the curve, so baby, have another biscuit. Yeah. It's how we feel. So, you know, and it's like, yeah. Well, my, like, an oversimplistic, uh, uh, simplifi oversimplified, this is, get some brothers in your life and you'll be fine. <laughs> Everything will be fine. <laughs> somewhere in the street on somebody somewhere uh slightly altered yes 
Oh, okay, because I've never noticed any. I've never, really? Of course, I think he can, the person can be sitting next to me, and I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I love it. I love the fashion. I just, it's, yeah, it's troubling how they look exactly the same. I don't know. Because, I guess because I'm kind of a simple individual. I'm very simple. Like, I'm not a big fan of fashion. I'm not a big fan of makeup. I don't really care about makeup. I like women who don't wear makeup. Huh? I didn't put on my makeup today, so I'm like kind of oh, really? embarrassed. Why would you be embarrassed? You should never wear that crap. I mean, look, I understand that makeup accentuates beauty. I get that. But if you're already beautiful, fuck it. That's just one less thing to do in the morning. That's great. I remember, like, I got in late last night, and I just didn't do it. Because it's it's not even, you know, because I I have a cosmetology license and uh, an esthetician's license. I'm a, I'm a gypsy. But the thing about it is, I tell you all these things, all these uh, estheticians who tell you this is good for your skin, they put all this skin, that's a lie. It's all fucking crap. Your skin is not affected by from the outside in. It's from the inside out. How you eat, what you put in your body is reflective of how your skin is. So when they're telling you put all this cream over here and your spores, it's a lie. It, all it does is block your pores. So it's not even really good for you. But, you know, people say, oh, it's hyperallergenic. Ah, it's a bunch of crap. It's, it's a bunch of crap. But, you know, I mean, because... It, it, it occurs to me like some guys, and I can only speak for the guys who are in my little forum we talk, is all the things that women do to accentuate beauty and make themselves look good, guys, most guys don't even know, notice most of Most of that stuff you guys are doing that for each other. Other women yeah. notice that stuff, but a guy, guys won't know because, you know, you can cut your hair and your boyfriend, it might be a week before he notices your hair is cut because... That is true. He's, okay, yeah, okay, see, look. I, Ten inches, and it's like, oh. And he never even noticed, though. As for, for I think for guys is look, she's attractive, she's not, and once she's attractive, that's it. Yeah. I don't need you to make. You don't have to put a turbo on that attractive. It's still attractive it's still to attractive. me. You'll change it. You're still you to me. Yeah. You've once you've registered. That's how it just. I don't know. I mean. No, I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, are you taking a left up here? I am. I think that, you know, women spend too much time or are too much brain power concerned with their looks and how men think they look, and they don't really need to. I mean, really, I mean it's a shame because beauty standards are set by, I think they're set by men, for women. Uh -huh. And the thing is, women have the power to change all of that. We collectively got together, look, we ain't doing this no more. Get what a guy's going to do. Well, we're just not going to date girls anymore? No. Men will get. Men will accept whatever they are given, but you have to make that. You have to. You decide that. You make that decision. You know because. Uh, what's oh, it? Uh, I know. I, I, I'm going to take. I'm going to have to make a U-turn because that's in the wrong lane. That's what happened. I run my run my mouth and try and drive. Um, um, because this, this this woman just did this. Uh, she she just did this recently. Uh, Alicia Keys. Stop wearing oh, yeah, makeup. I love that. Now, and I think it's a great thing. Now, someone did make the point, well, it's easy for her to do that because she's naturally beautiful. But the thing is, well, natural beauty according to who? It's all relative. If you decide you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Yeah, I think it does definitely come from it. It really does. And yeah. so I just, I, I think that, you know, yeah, you have to, the only person whose opinion should matter about the way you look is yours. As long as you're happy with what you see, it's all good. 100% I agree with that so much. I wish more people did. But it doesn't matter if you do. So, you know, it's like if, you're, if you feel good. Right. I mean, you're fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely.
It is. It drives me nuts. Also, exactly. And also, it shuts the GPS off. <laughs> oh, it does? Yeah. So, so like, it, you'll be about to close in on where you're going. It's and then, like a random place. Yeah, and then it goes off. So you don't, you can't see. So annoying. 